Jackanory, Jackanory. What's the story, Jackanory? The Ugly Duckling. There was once a mother duck. This mother duck had no children yet, for one, none of her eggs had hatched. She waited patiently day and night for babies to hatch. One day she was sitting on a nest of eggs. The mother duck felt something move beneath her. Crack, 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 crack. Filled with happiness, the mother duck watched as, one by one, her eggs hatched. She was so excited to lead her children to the pond and teach them all the ways of being a duck. Unfortunately for the mother duck, one egg was left to hatch. This egg was larger than the rest. This egg was browner than the rest. The little ducks patiently waited for two more days and nights. Oh, I want to go to the pond, mother! One baby duck quacked. Let's go, let's go, two more quacked excitedly. But the mother duck made them all wait, for she promised herself she would love all her children the same. At the crack of dawn on the third day, waiting, a large brown egg began to vibrate. It shook and shook as all the ducks watched in awe. Then suddenly, crack! Out of the large brown egg popped a large, strange-looking head of a bird didn't look much like a duck. This baby's beak was a little too long. His feathers were a little too scruffy. His face was a little too ugly. But nevertheless, the mother duck promised herself she would love all her children the same. She led her children into the nearby pond and then to teach each duckling how to be a proper duck. She taught them how to quack. Each duckling quacked. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, quack, quack. The ugly duckling quacked. Quack! So the ducks in the pond stared at the ugly duckling, began to laugh. The mother duckling sadly took a du- little duckling over to the different part of the wood pond. The other ducklings were giggling and making fun of the ugly one. Two nearby ducks swam by and pecked at the ugly duckling's feathers. Oh, this one looks nothing like the other, you others, I suggested. This one's ugly, the other ones, the other scoffed. The ugly duckling hailed his head in shame. Oh, the duckling became very embarrassed for the ugly duckling and made him stay in the corner of the pond. Well, he was practised swimming, diving and quacking and splashing. What do you mean? As all the ducks in the pond had gone to sleep, the ugly duckling decided it was time for him to leave. He knew he was causing her his mother distress. He did not want to leave, live in a place where he felt unwanted. So the little ugly duckling ran away. He waddled far away from the pond where he was born. He waddled through the small marsh plants and large riverbeds. He waddled over bun- bundles of sticks and piles of dung. He was this, all this waddling made him dirtier than ever. As he approached a new pond that was filled with very different ducks, these ducks were happily swimming and quacking. He advanced but one of the ducklings who looked to be a little, a bit, just a bit larger and older than the other, older, du- ugly duckling. Ah, there! Being the ugly duckling to the other ducklings. With this, the, the young, new family ducks turned and stared at the ugly duckling. And who are you? asked the mother duck. What are you? said the, uh, said the mother duck, father duck. You sure are ugly? All the ducklings chimed in. At this, the family ducks began to quack and laugh. At the ugly duckling, he waddled it off again in search of a nice family to call his own. He waddled far away from the pond with the family ducks. He waddled through the small large plants and large riverbeds reeds. He waddled over bundles of sticks and piles of dung. He's always waddled and made him even dirtier than before. Next, the other duckling came to an even larger pond full of family geese. The goslings were bray, brown grey like he was. Happily, the ugly duckling waddled to the water's edge, popped his little body in the water, and swam towards the family geese. He advanced one of the goslings, who looked even larger and greyer than him. Than him. Ah, there! The other duckling okay, exclaimed, greeting the gosling. Oh, with this, the funny goose turned and stared at the go- ugly duckling. And you are, and you are, said the mother goose. What are you? said the mother goose. You sure are luckily. All the goslings chimed in. 
At this, the family ducks began to honk and laugh. And they had a good duckling. Poor the duckling could run all off. All the geese surrounded him. The father goose said, Oh, you are quite, you're quite strange looking. You may stay with us. You're more than welcome to join our family. The ugly duckling could be, wouldn't be happy. The geese was, were kind of, very kind of him, even though, even though their honks hurt his ears. Many days and nights passed, and the ugly duckling was living happily with the geese. He played to play with goslings and the mother, and the father treated him like their own. Everything was perfect until a hunter and his basset hound approached the pond. The hunter began to firing off shots at the geese, and the hound chased the birds around the pond, trying to catch one. The ugly duckling would do, could do nothing but sit still. As the hound approached, sniffed at the wall, and cocked its head. What are you? You are sure ugly. He said, before he ran off in search of a real goose. In the midst of the hunter's ambush, the ugly duckling sadly waddled off once again. He was growing larger, his feathers were coming in, and the ugly duckling was able to fly off the ground. However, the ugly duckling had become very weak and hungry. He did not have enough strength to fly. Instead, he waddled his way to a small house where he took shelter during the night. In the morning, the ugly duckling awoke to the sound of the human glitter. What is it? An old woman asked. I doubt perhaps her husband replied. Just what we needed, the woman exclaimed. With that, the farmer and his wife allowed the ugly duckling to live with them. In hopes the duck would lay eggs for them to eat. They waited and waited and waited, but nothing happened. The ugly duckling never laid eggs. He did, however, grow larger and harder to take care of. Though the farmer and his wife had grown fond of the ugly duckling, they had no more room in their house. And so they shooed him out. Go find yourself a family that love you, shouted the farmer, sadly as he shut the door. And Ling hung his o- over hung over his he- he- dead head and waddled far away from the farmer's house. He waddled through nail marsh plants, large frozen river bees. He waddled over frozen bundles of sticks and frozen piles of dung. All this waddling made him cold and never miraculously the ugly duckling this vital cold winter. With spring, all the frozen ponds melted, the first of that raid from the large plants and the reed beds. The ugly duckling was still sad, however. He approached the crystal clear pond and saw a family of most beautiful birds he'd ever seen, swans. He sat by the water's edge. He didn't, he, he didn't even dare to ask these birds if he'd join, for he knew he was too ugly to live with ducks, geese and humans. He was surely too ugly to live with them gorgeous bevy of swans. Suddenly a swan gravely guided f- through the water over to where the ugly duckling was sitting. Oh, hey, my, 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 your feathers are the whitest I've ever seen. How they gleam in the sun, the swan exclaimed to the ugly duckling. Confused, the ugly duckling wandered to the water and peered at his reflection. Much surprised, he's not an ugly duckling, for he's now to dog at all. He's a beautiful white swan with a long and le- 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 neck. He entered the water and joined his new family. One day, as the swans were swimming, a man and wife came strolling up with a child. The swan recognised the couple as the farmer and the wife. They approached the edge of the pond and began to feed the swans breadcrumbs. The farmer looked at the at once over there and he said, It looks like you found yourself a niche for a family. You're the most beautiful swan I've ever seen. For the rest of his days, the swan lived happily with his new swan family and was greeted often by the family the farmer and his family. The end.